Hello and welcome back to Life.TV. This is episode number 46, a podcast that dives into exploring values. I'm your host, Ajit Panika. I lead an air conditioning company, Nova, and Pure Blue, a tech startup in the air conditioning domain. Every Saturday for the past 45 weeks at 11 a.m., we brought you conversations that go beyond business growth, focusing on the values that fuel it. So let's embark on a journey to uncover our true purpose and how we can grow by enriching our lives. Welcome to Life.me, where we explore values in life and business. And as always, I have Vivek Aswani with me. Hello, Vivek. How are you doing? Hey, Ajit. I am doing well. How are you doing? Absolutely good, Vivek. Another seven more episodes for the season to get over. Wow. <laughs> That'll be 52. I mean, finish one year of our podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. To some of our viewers who are joining us for the first time, Vivek Aslani is the driving force behind Kemo Fastener Company, a trailblazing company in the industrial fastener sector. What sets Vivek apart is his deep engagement with the exploration of values. Now, for close to four years, he has dedicatedly penned his reflection on this topic every week. These insights, these insightful thoughts are accessible on his website, vivekaslani.com. Vivek has authored the book, One Day at a Time, Reflections from Times of Silence which further delves into his journey and insights. This thought-provoking read is available on Amazon and also on his website, offering readers a, change, a chance to engage with this profound understanding of values and their role in both personal and professional lives. In today's episode of Life.TV, we are delving into a topic which is being aware of inequalities. Vivek, let's hear your reflections on this one. So, Ajit, uh, you know, we live with a lot of... Uh social and economic inequalities uh, in society. And, you know, some of these structures have been uh, developed over centuries, you know, which currently we may not have uh, control. But I think many of us are becoming aware of these inequalities. Uh, and it's also, in a, in a way, bringing a sense of responsibility in us. But I think it's also important to recognize uh, these inequalities and these structures uh, at a personal level. So, you know, inequality is not, Ajit, to my mind, about having more or less. Uh, inequality is considering somebody lesser of a person than uh, I am. Uh, only because my background, upbringing, education, my status in society, the opportunities and privileges I have, the moment I start, you know, looking at those as some of the uh, crutches of security, uh, or maybe I just might be, I think I'm more intelligent than somebody else. So start looking at others as less of lesser of a person. I think that is a very deep seated uh, paradigm sometimes, which we don't even realize. Uh, second is, you know, when we draw our strength from what we have, uh, you know, we tend to classify people and, and categorize them. And this classification brings about prejudices. It brings about biases. And therefore, at a very subtle level, it brings about a kind of an inequality in our own minds. And therefore, we deal with people very differently. And even though we may be extremely caring in our interactions with people, at a very subconscious level, there is a divide in our minds. And... Till we don't address this divide, the inner divide in us needs to first get addressed if we have to integrate ourselves. So removing inequalities out there in society starts with first removing the divide, the unequal paradigms that I may be living with, uh, sometimes consciously and sometimes without realizing it. And that really was, you know, the trigger of the reflection of, you know, being aware of these inequalities. But how do you actually go about removing these inequalities? Yeah, I think that's it's a good question. Um, so first, a one has to be, uh, of course, aware of the fact that I'm living with some of these inequalities. So I've spoken about four things and, and four ways in which one can uh, remove these inequalities, Ajit. 
One is when we respect the other person, not for the title, but for the person. So when I'm respecting the person, I'm not respecting the title. You know, very often you'll find that we respect somebody because he or she is in a particular position. And the moment the person is out of that position, very often society's interaction with that person changes, which is why a lot of people who have power today or are in a position find themselves completely at sea when they're out. So learning to respect the individual and not the label and the title is a starting point. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't follow protocol. Uh, when we meet, for example, the prime minister, uh, obviously there is a particular protocol I will follow. But it doesn't mean that as a human being, at a fundamental level, uh, I don't give the same level of respect and regard uh, to every other person I interact with. You know, and Ajit, I'm reminded of one of my favorite movies, uh, My Fair Lady, where uh, Eliza Doolittle is this flower girl and uh, Professor Higgins transforms her into this fabulous uh, speaking person who gets treated as a princess. And then they have a bit of a fight and she, you know, screaming at him and she says, look at Colonel Pickering. He treats an ordinary flower girl as if she was a princess. And immediately Higgins replies, he says, and I treat a princess as if she was a flower girl. I think the point he was making is that I do not differentiate between a flower girl and a princess. I give them the same, uh, yeah, I, I interact with them equally. So though on a lighter note, I thought there was a message in that. So one is respecting the person and not the title. The second is inclusiveness. You know, very often because of our position, our privileges, our backgrounds, we tend not to include certain people. And I think when we do that in a very subtle way, without realizing it, we are creating these barriers and invisible walls of inequality in society. So learning to be a lot more inclusive uh, is the second uh, thing. The third is many of us are privileged and these privileges, you know, allow us to do certain things. But when we don't look at our privilege and we don't let the privilege become a source of divide, rather we view our privilege as a responsibility, we break some of the inequalities we might be living with. And the fourth is stepping out of our comfort zone. I think this is the most powerful. It's very easy to be cocooned in my comfort zone and the life that I'm used to and I'm familiar with and I'm comfortable with. But when I step out of that and I walk in someone else's shoes, I truly understand and it, you know, it develops what we call empathy in us. So building empathy removes the inequalities we may be living with. So respecting the person and not the title, being more inclusive, using our privilege as a responsibility and not as a divide, and stepping out of our comfort zone and walking in someone else's shoes helps us personally uh, to break these inequalities. Hey, something, Vivek. Uh, have you taken any steps in your business to create a more inclusive and equitable environment like for your team, stakeholders? Can you share some insights into those? Inclusiveness, uh, absolutely. And I remember this was a thought that came to me very early in our business. We're in the industrial stapling and nailing space. And mu much as I would love it, it's not very easy to attract women to be part of the frontline sales team in our business. Uh, and I was aware that this is going to be a bit of a structural issue in our business. Therefore, very consciously, most of the back end of KMO, whether it be customer service, uh, accounts, the entire imports department, uh, the MIS, all of them were uh, built on the back of having women um, as you know managers and uh, leaders. And we almost have, I think, about 40% women in the organization. And I think that balance has turned out to be very powerful and extremely beneficial for us as a company. Second is, you know, most of our people are homegrown. And in that, one has, in a way, because, you know, you're a small organization and you start with nothing, you're forced to see the best in everyone and bring out the best from everyone. So when you're doing that, Ajit, you're really not looking at the background 
so I didn't even look at the educational qualifications or anything. I just looked at the simple fact that is this person hardworking, sincere, trustworthy, and does he or she get what is needed to be done? Third is, yes, we did consciously create opportunities. Uh, I had shared this earlier. Mahesh was working with a courier company, he used to deliver parcels to our office, asked us for a job. We needed an office boy. Long story short, today Mahesh, after almost 10 or 12 years in the company, manages the entire spare parts division of more than 4,500 spare parts. Now, what we really did was we spotted somebody who was, you know, who had all, all the elements of becoming a good manager. And we said, we need to create opportunities. And th that's the other thing, Ajit, I've realized that as businesses, our job is not only to generate uh, wealth and taxes, but to also create opportunities for people. There are a lot of worthy people out there. It's not just the employment, but also the opportunities. So, you know, these are some of the small ways in which as a MSME, we've, uh, you know, been a little more inclusive and uh, built a, a particular culture, I would say. In your industry, is there anything like an inequality that you have uh, noticed and is there something that you did about it? I mean, just like the example that you would like to share with all of us, as you know, that I noticed this and I thought that wasn't right. And this is what we did to actually uh, remove that inequality. Um, I, I'm not sure that it was any particular inequality as such that I noticed. And, you know, like I've always said, even in our, in our earlier podcast, Ajit, that the only person I can get judgmental about is uh, myself. But, I'll, you know, I'll just share with you some of the simple practices that we have. And it might in a way, touch on this topic and, and, you know, give you a sense. So when our customers walk into the office, obviously we treat them really well, right? We offer them tea, we offer them something to drink, we, you know, make sure that they're comfortable. When a courier person comes to our office to drop a parcel or when the postman comes or the postwoman comes to our office, he or she is made to sit down given a glass of water and offered a cup of tea with the same level of care and respect as we would to our customers. Now, you know, why do we do that? A, it's a simple human gesture and I'm sure lots of people do it. But I think more importantly, it was the culture that at a fundamental level, we're all the same. At a fundamental level, we're all worthy of the same level of respect. We may have different roles, we may have different responsibilities. Some of us may have different qualifications and therefore we're doing different types of things. But we shouldn't view people as unequal or unequal uh, and that inequality, just that I am superior to you. I think that is what we were breaking. And second is the moment I start treating my customers with more respect than I do a postman, then what am I saying? I'm saying that, look, my customer is a bigger person than the postman. No, as, hum as humans, they're the same. I may spend lots more time with my customer, obviously, right? Uh, but when we instituted that practice, I think we were sending a message internally. So as a result of which, what happens is, you know, it's remarkable, Ajit, that I've heard this while passing the office. Very often I'm hearing the customer service team talk to somebody on the other line, on, on the other side of the line. and. It could just be a, a worker from a shop floor having an issue, or it could be the owner of a company. But I can see that the level of politeness is the same. And, I, and this is how something as small as this has converted to great customer care and, and built a culture. You know, when you were talking about it, another sudden thought that came across to me was, you know, I don't, you know, I'm very active with the trade body, you know, which is yes. the HVAC trade body. So yeah. when this trade body was growing, you know, usually the bigger guys come on board, right? You know, so sometimes when you articulate that inequality, you know, you have to get a little smart in that whole thing. And you know, tell me what is the issue that we were facing? The issue we were facing is, hey, let's not include all these small timers, you know, who are less than a crore of rupees, who are, you know, like, they're like a nuisance, they're like a nuisance value. And if they come on board, you know, we will lose our focus. So the idea was, let's keep it for the big guys and but not for the smaller guys. 
Yeah. And our whole thought process was, listen, we built it for the trade. When we started building a trade body, we never put these things. Now your personal uh, preferences are coming in and just, you know, moving the goalpost. So how do we actually now get everybody? Of course, one is by force saying that, listen, you got to get. The other is how do you bring the value proposition? This is one of those funny things that we did and it just did brilliant for us. So I said, so we said, that, listen, if we have these smaller guys, not in our goal, you can't control how many small guys are going to come in. That's not within your control. Anybody can be an entrepreneur in the business. There are a lot of low barrier entries. They will enter. But the problem is they can become a nuisance value for you because they're not part of it. They don't know the best practices that you do and you're not and how you scale up. So if they're going to be part of your trade body, you are going to teach them and they are also going to get uplifted. So at least your business also is taken into account and then there is a level playing field coming in. So there's fun in actually bringing them on board. So sometimes inequalities have to be seen from a different perspective, you know. And the moment you actually put this perspective in place, everyone kind of aligned. They said, yeah, it makes sense. We need to bring everybody on board. So there is an equitable space for all of us. And there is a larger benefit in all of us being together. It's like that same story, right? I can be living in a most expensive house, but if I'm surrounded by slums all around the place, the beauty of my house is lost. And I get that sink into my So that there's this beauty in that inequality in that whole thing. So similarly from this, you know, comes another question, even for businesses. You know, how can businesses contribute to reducing, you know, these economic inequalities? You know, especially in marginalized communities or very small businesses, uh, you know, they, they feel completely lost out, you know, and that's an inequality that, and you know, when we talk about in, inequalities, it usually narrows down to a very monologue of gender based, but there are inequalities of different kinds. And even in terms of businesses, so what are your thoughts? You know, how could larger organizations can help these smaller organizations who I feel are not on the level playing field and are marginalized and lose out on that? That kills entrepreneurship. Yeah. No, so uh, let me address that in terms of the people who work with us. I think we clearly, as organizations, whether we are big or small, need to move from looking at paying minimum wage to paying a living wage. You know, very often when we employ people, we say, okay, what's the minimum wage? As long as I'm above that, I'm okay. Well, yes, technically we are okay in terms of compliance. But if we really want to reduce the inequalities out there in society, we have to find it in ourselves to go that half a step extra and say that, is this really a good living wage? And not just you know anchor ourselves to the minimum wage. Second is obviously we got to pay fair. Uh, very often there are people who we know we can afford to pay more. The position can, and sometimes the person is desperate for a job, and we get somebody at a lesser cost than we were even actually willing to pay. Uh, I don't know whether that saving is really being smart you know we may pat ourselves and say you know, i was willing to pay x and actually i got this person because that person was really desperate for a job i offered 30 percent less and he or she said yes i don't know whether we've really done the right thing or the smart thing if you ask me the smart thing would be that listen what is the fair price and what is the fair wage that i'm willing to give for this and i should yeah third is we need to invest <clears throat> in the capacity of our people so you know we have a program ajit where if somebody wants to study further we you 50% of the tuition fee and the balance 50%, you can pay off through your loan as a loan uh, through your salary over the next few years. So we had Aisha who completed her MBA from our company, a part-time MBA. And after two years, she left and she came, you know, and met me. She said, listen, I'm really embarrassed to say this, but I'm getting a much better job. And I was thrilled. I said, Aisha, investing in you and your MBA was not about us. It was about us investing in you. I said, today you are getting a job and double the salary uh, in a much bigger and a better company. She said, yeah, but I'm only getting this because I'm an MBA and I'm only an MBA because this company supported me. I said, but that's why we exist, to invest part of our resources into capacity building. So, Ajit, when we look at our stakeholders as the purpose of our business, then we change our paradigm as to how we not only accumulate our wealth, but how we apply our wealth. And therein lies an opportunity for each one of us. We don't have to be the biggest company in India to change India. It's the millions of the MSMEs along with the big boys 
who collectively can do it, but we need to then play uh, our part as well. And I'm just gonna, you know, end at one thing. You said something earlier is bringing everyone together. Uh, just very recently, a few weeks back, we had a Diwali lunch. And we, this time we decided to do it outside the office and we did it in a nice restaurant. And many of the office, uh, the factory packing girls said, I said nothing to him. And I told them a simple thing. I said, you work, and I said this in Hindi, but I want to translate in English. I said, you work honestly and you work with respect. Nothing can be bigger than that. There is no big and small in life, right? And for the first time, we were all there, the factory workers, the office staff, the whole team, including the bhaiya ji, who is an outsourced person, but who the hamal who actually carries our goods into the trucks, you know. And when we brought everyone together, and many of them are going to that place for the first time, I think in a very small way, we broke some of the mental barriers, if at all they were ready. Amazing. Absolutely fantastic. I guess, and I, and I, I was hoping through this episode, you know, we actually broaden the horizon of just inequalities, because often when you talk about inequalities, it just narrows down to gender. Of course, that's important, but there are much more bigger things when it comes to inequalities. And it's for most of us to actually break those barriers. Well, that's the time that we have for today. That's a thought provoking discussion. And we'd love to hear from you too. Join the dialogue, put your thoughts on social media platforms, share this episode with the, with your friends and get a conversation going. And that's it. What we have for today at life.ev. Join us next week on Saturday at 11 a.m. for another episode on another interesting topic. Well, Vivek, thank you so much for being with us here like every week. See you next Saturday at 11 a.m. with another interesting reflection. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.